Well, hi there and welcome to Her Standards. How are you? Honestly, tell us how you are doing. Uh, talk to us. We are available at KTN Home across all social media platforms. Remember, this is Her Standards, the show that inspires you, the show that brings to you your weekly dose of inspiration, the show that empowers, connects and influences. But above all, it is the show that connects you directly to women that you need to know. And I'm very excited today because I'm hanging out with an amazing lady who actually has almost similar hair taste to mine. So you give us a few <laughs> minutes. We still have some, <laughs> we, we have to catch up on, on our hair issues before we get into the real issues. But without much ado, welcome to the show and welcome Dr. Zipi Okhol. Yes. Karibu Mama. Asante Tume Mama. Safiri. We've traveled. Yes. You should have told us. You should have warned us. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to Kajiado. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. But yeah. It's beautiful. Yes. And the air is amazing. Yes. And we'll definitely come back. Oh, it's to Takula Nyama. Takula Nyama. Yes. Oh. <laughs> To Miss Kia. And I think yeah. you're also welcome. Remember, you can talk to us at Quintambori at KTN Home across all socials. Our guest for today will also let us know in a short while if she has a social media handles. The real question is do you really know ZP? <coughs> if you don't know ZP, now sit tight, relax, and enjoy the rest of the show because we have so much to talk about. But I, I know ZP is one woman that is conspicuous. You cannot not notice her, forget about her infectious laughter. There's so much about her, but I just want her to introduce herself first in her own words. Who is Zipi Okop? That's a Zipora that's a Agatha Okop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us more, mommy. I am a lecturer at KCA University. I teach theater arts and film. I am a gender consultant. I am a filmmaker. I am a performing artist and I do a lot of one woman shows. Yeah, people sometimes people ask me. Why are you doing one woman? Why are you not just doing with other people? I'm like, mm. it's easy to do with other people. Mm. If I have a PhD in theater arts, I need to do the hard one. Mm. Yeah, to do a 90 minutes alone, that's it. How is that? How do you, how do you sustain 90 minutes alone? How do you entertain your practice? audience? Practice? Yes, you have to practice, you have to rehearse, you have to put yourself in that mental frame. But uh, a lot of times I'm doing my personal stories with tidbits of other people's personal experiences. So it's always fun. And um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, before we dive into the matter of today, like I said, we have to talk about hair. You know, people think that hair is such a small issue, but we are talking to an artist yeah, today. Yeah. Why do you rock the kind of hairstyle that you do? Before I tell you my story. Mm. Mm. Why do I rock this kind of yeah. hair? Mm. I just want to be different. Mm. Yeah. When, when did you make when did you make the decision to you know to make the big it's called it's always called, called the big the big chop. The big chop. Yes. Mm. Yeah, I I think I, I've had always had short hair, I think, for a long time. Yeah. But I think um after well, when I got separated, that was in twenty twelve, I said this short hair needs a brighter dye. I used to love dye, but darker, you oh, know, yeah. copper red, yeah. copper bronze. And I said, why not just go all blonde? Yeah. Yes, because I needed to redefine myself. Mm -hmm. I wanted to redefine myself. And uh, and uh, there, are, there are people who look at you and they're like, oh, she's a PhD doctor with white hair? Yeah, blonde. Mm -hmm. Blonde. Yeah. Like, oh, as in, I'm like, yeah. And, and it, it, it makes people wonder, like, how seriously they should take you or not. But for me, it's an issue of making a statement. It's my style. And... Um, when I need to speak, I think you need to listen to me and uh, not just look at my hair. So it's also just to make a difference, to redefine myself here. Yeah. In the Yari, you know her? Huh? I the, do. You, you love her music? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she makes this very powerful statement. I don't know whether it's originally hers, but she says, I am not, I'm not my hair. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes, huh? yes. I'm not my hair. I'm not my hair. Yes. So do you think that women sometimes get judged harshly because of the kind of hairstyle that they rock? They I have, let me tell you, give you one experience. Uh, I served in a parents, uh, what do you call it, not parents, teacher, but mm -hmm. a committee for a class yes. where my ch one of my children was. And one parent actually said that, how can you, how can you be considered a serious parent when you have red hair? Red hair. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. So do you think that sometimes women are judged, misjudged, based mm. on the, how they look generally, not just hair? Mm. I have been misjudged a lot of times because mm. of hair and even makeup, because I'm always wearing very bright lipstick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so like you walk into a room and they look at you and they're like, mm, like serious women, educated women, you know, uh, women in high profile offices. Yeah. 
we should wear, first of all, wear suits, have black hair, uh, wear minimal, if any, makeup. I'm just the opposite. I'm like, I mean, I'm not here to fulfill anyone's desires. <laughs> so we are judged, but uh, like we've been judged for so many things. Yeah. Uh, personally, as ZP, I have been judged for so, so many things that I think if I'm going to be judged for me, I say, oh, at least that's something that's not so personal. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, it's okay. <laughs> it is, you say it is what it, it, it is. What what it it is. is. Yeah, yes. But maybe if there's someone, because I know we are living in a very interesting era where a lot of us are alive on the digital platforms, but there's that young girl somewhere who probably mm. doesn't have the confidence or the courage that you, you and I have. Yeah. What would you tell them in terms of being judged on the basis of their outlook? Mm. Mm, you're unique. And there's no one else like you. No matter what everybody does, let nobody be able to put you inside a box. Mm -hmm. Because if they put you inside a box, the world is going to miss out on who you truly are. So let the world enjoy who you truly are. Be yourself. If you feel like dyeing your hair purple, sweetheart, do it. If you feel like redefining your style, doing anything, you know, mm -hmm. do it. I, I don't have a skirt suit in my closet. Mm. Yes. <laughs> it's that bad. Really? Yes. Mm. Because I can't, I can't imagine wearing the same thing everyone else is wearing. Mm. And uh, so young girl, be you. <laughs> and to know that you are actually a lecturer, yeah. a PhD lecturer yeah. at KCA University. How do, you, how do people view you when they say when you go for meetings and everyone else is rocking? You know, the, the suit, <laughs> and you walk in in your colorful. By the way, we did not plan to have uh, this yeah. color on set. It just happened. Yeah, so how, how do you deal with that? I think the first time somebody meets me, they're always like, I, okay, this one is just too bright, you yeah. know, like there's yeah. too much color. But I think with the time they get used to you, because mm -hmm. when you are in those boards and the people are discussing yeah. things and they hear you speak, then they give you some respect for what you say. They, they start to really understand who you are and they stop looking at you at surface level. Mm -hmm. So I'm used to it. Like the first time I meet people, I know there's always that impression. But people who are used to me, they're kind of like, she's more than that. Yeah. It's more about what's inside the content. Exactly. Anyway, when you were growing up, did you want to be a lecturer? No. Okay. <laughs> Tell me more. <laughs> How did you end up there? I didn't want to be a lecturer. Yeah. Oh, but my mother really wanted me to be a teacher. These yeah. mothers, what, was, what is know. it about them in teaching? Yes, yeah. my mother, she was, she was a teacher. She left teaching and uh, she got into business. I always wanted to be uh, a performing artist. Mm -hmm. But at that very young level, I wanted to be a broadcaster. Elizabeth Omolo. Hey. I just wanted <laughs> to be, not like, yeah. I not wanted to, to be, be Elizabeth oh. Omolo. Oh. I remember when I was in class four, yeah. uh, there was this... Uh, children's program on KBC. Mm -hmm. She came to our school in Homer Bay, Sango Academy. They mm -hmm. recorded the Kipindi Chawa Toto. Mm -hmm. And then I see a very nice English person. She's like, hmm, we can record some things also for the what? Mm -hmm. for, for the, the program. For the English program yeah. section. Yeah. And a few of us did like the English stories. And I was like, I met Elizabeth Omolo when I was 10 years and I wanted to be her. Like so going back to the house and seeing her on TV, I just wanted to be her. Mm. And so, um, of course, coming to Nairobi, things are different. <laughs> on ground. <laughs> things are different on ground. Yeah. But I went to the university. I was supposed to do uh, law mm. and um, against my father's will. <laughs> Sorry, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> against my father's will, I yeah. went, uh, I said, I'll do communication because mm. communication was better than saying you want to do drama and theater studies. Huh? Mm. So, drama and theater studies, That's they seemed did. less. It seemed less Serious. like you want to be like Thorongong. That was the word. <laughs> but that was the thing. So I went back to Maseno yeah. and then I was told you were allowed to change courses. Uh -huh. I was like, ah, I don't have to do what I came here to study. I can do what I feel like studying here. Yeah. And I changed by the time my parents knew it was too late. You had graduated. I was in third year. Yeah. And I was told, if you ever come back and say you don't have a job, yeah, you'll remember we told you to have taken even education, you didn't want law, you didn't want communication, afadali, drama. No, you want to be a thorough. Let me tell you, mm. I made it upon myself, I said, Zippy, I'm going to make this thing work, so that that threat, I'll never go back and, at home and say, I'm looking for a job, and I've made it work. Mm -hmm. Have you gone back? I never. Mm. <laughs> 
I've made it work. Uh, and what do they say now that you Nowadays, older? everybody wants their child to talk to me so that they can study theater, arts, and film. Yeah, and parents call me like, I, I, need, I think I need to start charging. Please talking do. To parents. Yeah, that's consultancy. Yes, mm -hmm. but parents call me like, this child of mine, they want to study theater and film, but I've never seen my child acting. And then I say, okay, but do they have even drama in their school? You know, sometimes the relationship between parents and... Uh, children at home is different from the child and their peers in school so you, you know your child to be very quiet but at school they're like <laughs> your child is the center of the party mm -hmm. so you take one-on-one -on -one and talk to this child and you realize yes the parent is right they've always been interested yeah. in maybe engineering but they want to do theater and film and i tell the student i mean then study if you are very good in technical aspects handling machines then fine you still study film mm -hmm. you can still do sound you can do lighting you can do camera because i believe like the film industry is the one that it's so wholesome of other professions mm -hmm. even lawyers i mean mm -hmm. corporate lawyers, they're really signing agreements every day so yeah i talk to parents every day so uh right now everybody wants to do that and i encourage everybody to go back to school mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. you know the parents who their children want to explore uh, career options such as you know being DJs and being artists and they cannot hear any of it yeah yeah have you experienced that people? I do that and, yes yeah. I tell them the parents like uh, right now it's actually easy to give them examples I tell them do you know there are people who are making millions on TikTok yeah and do you know there are um, people who are like medical doctors and lawyers who are broke yeah so the thing is, if your child is not interested in doing it, he will not put effort in doing that career, even if you tell them to do engineering. They'll not be enthusiastic about it. There is nothing like a profitable career or a marketable career. The marketable career is the one which you have interest in because you will make it work. If you're not interested in it, you it will not work. It will not work. It won't work. Yeah. You've touched a road now and I can feel people, you know, pulling their seats closer <laughs> to, to listen to you. I know maybe they have questions for you. Uh, how can we find you on social media? Dr. Zipio Koth on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. I am, I'm not so good with Twitter, yeah. But Facebook and Instagram, I think I reply within 12 hours. That's clear. Yeah. What is your business? What are your business hours? <laughs> when I sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyway, Zipi. Yeah. Um, you know, when, when, you come, when, when you talk about the film industry in Kenya, uh, what is your honest take on what is happening? Because now you're a professional mm -hmm. and you, well, you've studied it, you teach it and you, you do it. Yeah. And you see what's happening mm -hmm. across, yeah. you know, social media, on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, you now have content creators. What is your honest opinion? I am excited at where the film industry is at now. Because truth is, it has never been better than what it is right now in this country. Yeah, like uh, people can say, oh, it's, it's not as good as... I, 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 I don't like comparison, so I, I never say like as. When I'm like, forget the others. Question is, we may not be as good as wherever, but as a state, I think we have never been better than we are right now. Right now we have got, I mean, we have got a, an empowerment fund for film by the government. We are having different platforms. Netflix just sponsored how many students to study in five different universities. Um, we are having Showmax um, and Netflix commissioning Kenyan content, original Kenyan content, before I even go to the other mm. ones that are adapted. Yeah. As in, it has never been better than this. Yeah. So we may not be like all those other countries that we want to compare ourselves to, but I'm excited. If we are here right now, then there's so, so much more. Um, I think this country graduates at least 300 students every year on film, on theater and film. Yeah. And I'm talking about bachelor's level. I'm mm. talking about diploma. If we mix the diploma levels and all that, at least 1,000 graduates every year. Mm. And uh, that means we are getting to have more film professionals in the industry. Mm. Yeah, even if all the 1,000 graduates don't make it, there are at least I only say 30% would make it strongly in the industry. That means we are doing well. So in terms of training, we're doing well. In terms of practice, we're doing well. In terms of even the content itself coming out there, because there was a time everyone was practicing, but I don't know what used to happen at the edit level. People mm. used to edit films for two years, three years, you movie mm. a talker. Mm. But nowadays people are shooting films and you know, like in six months latest, the film will be out. Audience are going to the cinemas to watch. I like, 
we are going at a very good pace. The audience is loving films. They are going to the platforms to watch films. Look at what Philly TV is doing. Mm -hmm. People are watching films and our content is selling. I have my film Midlife Crisis. And right now we are on, uh, I think, is it seven, seven airlines? Whoa. Yeah, I'm like, there are a lot of avenues for films. Yes, there are a lot of avenues for films. So everywhere I think there's, there are so many available markets and people just need to explore. Yeah. And would you say that we are getting to a level where we can even have our we, we can have our own stream channel, say our own our own Netflix, our Kenyan version of Netflix? Yes. Are we get? Uh, uh, when do you think we'll get there? When because we have what an I've investor. noticed is yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of people I interact with they claim that yeah. they have content, but they don't know where to put it. They don't know where to sell. Oh, it's not paying for that matter. Mm. Mm. Those are two different. Yes. Yeah. The people who complain that they don't know where to take it. Why did you start creating it if you didn't know where to take it? Let's start from there. Because I'm an artist. I'm a budding artist. Um, mm. And that is where the problem starts. Mm. You have to decide whether you are two types of artists. We have got two types. Yeah. The one who create arts for art's sake and the one who are in the business okay. of art. So if you're creating for art for art's sake, then it's okay. Create a few people watch, you'll be happy. But if you are doing this for business, you should be able to know what you're going to do with this movie. Because one, you should know whether you're going to premiere it and you start marketing it early enough. Because a lot of Kenyan films, we get our first revenue from screenings. Mm. Before even we talk about taking them on other different platforms. So that is where we get our first shot. So if people like it on the, uh, on the premiere week and start that kind of stuff, then they will go to the platforms. I don't believe in putting your whole feature film on YouTube. Short films, fine. Features, no. Skip it, sell I it. Mean, it's very little money. Mm. By the time you reach a million views, you need to be... <laughs> no. Mm. Monetize short films, you know, reels and stuff. That's okay. That's okay. But a whole 90 minute feature film, ensure then you have at least 100,000 subscribers. Or talk to content creators who already have that kind of... Uh, that kind of that kind of following. Let me say right now. If I really want to put my film on TV, YouTube, I'll talk to like Kabiwa Jesus. You get what I mean? Yeah, I know this guy. Some form of partnership. Yes, yeah. I say, Kabi, you have got 500,000 mm -hmm. followers on YouTube. Then I put it. But if I have got my, you know, I know, mm -hmm. a thousand uh, subscribers, what am I putting that movie 23 there? 23 subscribers. <laughs> 23. 23 subscribers. So I think when it comes to distribution, we really need to look at very, very diff. Uh, there, there's so much. I do acquisitions for Rush Lake Media. Mm. So there's Rush Lake Media. There's my movies Africa. There is uh, XP Africa. That's in, those are people with offices in Kenya. Yeah, let me talk about that. Mm. So, please, if somebody says they don't know where to take it. Mm. Mm. Where do they get the information from? I think that they're not doing the research. Oh. Yes. If you just Google, like, distributors in East Africa, the names will all pop up, at least 12. I hope you're keeping up with uh, <laughs> this very interesting conversation. Zippy is a whole story, in fact. And KTN can also buy. <laughs> <laughs> KTN can buy. <laughs> yes, KTN can buy. And, yeah. uh, and screen it, say, uh, I mean, we'll take this film and screen it three times a year. And, you know, give something small. You know, a lot of times yeah. people want big money. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, I want to sell my film for one million. Yes. Mm -hmm. Only Netflix and maybe Showmark does that. The rest will buy for like. 100, 150, 200, but look at it this way. Do an exclusive for many platforms. If you get 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 and an exclusive for five platforms, you've got any one million. You have your million. Yeah. So it's all about tactic and, and, and yes. uh, planning and doing the researching. Yeah. Like I was saying, <coughs> excuse me, we are hanging out with Dr. Zippy Okoth, who is a consultant on performing arts, as you can as you can hear. She's a uh, gender issues and curriculum development. She's a producer, director, storyteller. <laughs> author, lecturer. Hey, what else don't you do, mommy? <laughs> sports. <laughs> oh, sports. You don't do sports. I don't do sports. <laughs> oh, really? But there are everything else you do. Where did you grow up? Homer Bay. Hey. Yes. Where? Homer Bay, Homer Bay, like around the town, there's a place called Gotrabur. Mm -hmm. That's where my father's home is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And going to school, the people who are definitely meeting you here for the first time. For the first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I grew up in Homer Bay County, a place called Gotrabur. And then I went to Sango Academy. Then mm -hmm. I went to Asumbi Girls High School. Oh. Integrity is our motto. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, then yeah. I went to Maseno University yeah. for uh, my bachelor's where I did drama and theater studies, then the University of Nairobi where I did gender and development studies, then to Kenyatta University where I did my PhD in theater arts, and uh, yeah. You say the rest is, the, no, the rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Zippy, yeah. now coming back to, like you said, your life is out there, your public life is out there. Yeah. And uh, it's not just out there, it is actually hidden. Well, for those who have not seen <laughs> it, it is hidden inside a book called Oops. Zippy, and this is from the diary of a divorced woman. Mm -hmm. um, possibly, would you mind sharing a bit of just giving us a bit of a background on that? I know there's a lot that went down mm. in your private life. <coughs> there was abuse, which we'll talk about, and even try and analyze this, the state of, mm. you know, um, gender-based violence in Kenya. Mm -hmm. There is depression. There is a lot that went down for you. you was in, there was infidelity, there was abuse, there was trauma, there was rejection, and then eventually the divorce. Just yeah. give us a bit, if it's not too much to ask. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, when I was very young yes. <laughs> and hot. <laughs> Hold that thought. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. I see my producer is telling me that we need to, to pay some bills. I think that is a good suspense for the second part of this conversation. <laughs> We want to take a short break. Second part is going to be hot, hot. very hot, <laughs> and you want to stay around. We are talking to Dr. Zippy Okoth. Mm. She is a Jill of all trades. I have to make reference, tell you who she is. She is a consultant on performing arts. She's gender issues and curriculum development specialist, producer, director, storyteller, author, lecturer, and anything in between. Uh, we are very, very excited to have her on her standards today. Remember, this is the show where we connect you to women you need to know. And deep down, I strongly believe that Dr. Zippy Okoth is one such woman. How is it so far? Do you have any questions for us? Remember, you can talk to us on our socials at KTN Home. You can also hit me up at Queen Tambori. When we come back on the second part of this conversation, we'll get a bit personal and candid. Do not go away. glad you could stick around for the second part of this conversation. <coughs> this is Her Standards with me, Queen Tambori. Thank you once again for keeping it here every week for your weekly dose of inspiration. Thank you for the feedback, by the way. I know uh, we have people who are watching from everywhere, every corner of this country. And you know why? Because they value and appreciate the stories of women that we bring on this show. What can we say? Asante Nisana. Uh, in the meantime, you can still talk to us across our socials at KTN Home, but I'm also available as Quinta Mbori on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course we have Dr. Zipio Koth here with us. She will also share her, social, her socials uh, as we move along with the show. First part, which was all about getting to know our guest and her inspiration to join the film industry. Second part, we want to switch gears a bit because Zippy's story is not just about her professional life. There's a lot more that we can learn from her lots of lessons that we can learn from her as women who are living this life um, <laughs> and of course I'm talking about um, a book a product a book that she published in 2019 called oops zippy and this is from the diary of a divorced woman let's start from the the title of this book <laughs> yeah uh -huh. I looked for a title yeah and uh, I don't know somehow I kept saying oops Oops, then I was like, why am I struggling with the title? It's Oops Zippy, like, oops, I said it. Like, I said it all in the book, so Oops Zippy. Yeah. You had an oops moment. I had an oops moment. Tell me about that yeah. moment, yeah. So I, I was married in 2008 to what I would say, the love of my life. <laughs> oh, oh. 
<laughs> Don't you all do? <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but um, it, it wasn't as rosy as I had imagined marriage to be. Because what did you imagine marriage to be? Like I say, my parents, my, my, my dad loved my mother and um, my mother loved my dad. And it was not like a secret the way people say, you know, old people, they don't show. Yeah. No, they could show love. They, they, they had the PDA moments. Yeah, like we could just see them sometimes. My father comes and buys my mother a gift. My mother is always saying, oh, leave that for that. As in, it's a, it's, it's a small thing. Like, mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, when she talks or touching him, you know, it's it, those... You, like we could feel my mother loves my dad and my dad loves my mom and we felt it as a family we felt it yeah like they used to talk about anything everything and i have always wanted that i still do i still do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay i'm a hopeless romantic yeah mm. it's better so, uh at 25 now i got married to ricky and um it wasn't as blissful as i had thought it was first of all a very long distance marriage mm -hmm. Uh, but then even when he came home, it wasn't as good. There was the domestic violence, there was uh, physical abuse, there's emotional abuse. And I struggled with that through, through our five-year marriage. And all this abuse started during the first time. I mean, people ask, why did you stay that long? Because everybody how, how stays long, long enough. How long were you in the relationship? Five years. Yeah, yeah like we, were to, we, we, we dated for two years, mm -hmm. long distance though. Mm -hmm. And then we married for five years. Then I said, enough enough and uh, we called it quits not in the not in the nicest of ways mm. and so in 2012 on 14th of december 2012 we parted ways yeah and uh, we had a home in kitengela and we left and uh, hold yeah hold it uh you, your reason for the divorce you said those physical there was physical emotion, abuse emotional, emotional, emotional abuse, abuse. Yeah. you know when you say physical many people probably can they have a, a vague idea of what yeah. it is, but when you say emotional, mm -hmm. what exactly are you talking about? What are you referring to? Emotional is like saying, the way I fought to study drama and theater studies, yeah. somebody tells you, I don't want you to perform. I don't want you to go on stage again. You're now mine. And then I love very short skirts, <laughs> short dresses. They're like, no, no wearing short clothes. Hey, <laughs> why are you wearing makeup? Who are you going to see? You know, it's like seven people. Why are you not yet at home? And someone telling you, you're not even good enough and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And um, even uh, even like when you do something, somebody doesn't really appreciate it that much. And it, it really beat me because uh, even when like I was having my child, I felt like he was never there. And you know, when somebody has got moments of infidelity, countless moments in itself, it also starts making you feel very inferior. Like, what is it that I don't have? I'm trying to do everything to make myself perfect wife. <laughs> yeah, that... Uh, he doesn't value you, you know. So all that, or anything that emotional abuse is about making you feel you're not good enough. You're not good enough. Like somebody just making you feel no matter what you do, you'll never be good enough. Yes. And a lot of women are going through emotional abuse. Yeah. And uh, I, I, have, I think after doing that story on stage, this, this book is like two parts of two stage plays I did, one woman shows. The first one was Stranger in My Bed, then the second one I did, also still in 2018, Strange Voices. Because the first part I talked about the marriage, the love affair between me and Ricky. Then uh, the second part I decided to do it because uh, people believe that maybe when you get divorced, like, oh, my China, oh, no, you're going to be happy, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the beginning of another long journey. Divorce is not easy. And I tell guys, before you move out, think. Though when it comes to physical abuse, I say, there's no thinking. Mm. It's move out now or you're going to be dead next. Mm. Yeah, so the second part, I talked about the divorce, what I went through, the emotional turmoil, the indecision, should I go back, should I stay, starting to date again, trying to meet new people, wondering, is it really worth it, you know? So there's so, so much so searching through a divorce process, mm. yeah. Five years you were in this relationship, some some people always want mm. to say, or they always ask is mm. why did you, why did it take five years for you to, yeah. to move out here? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Why? Because it's a woman who makes the home. <laughs> because the church hates divorce. <laughs> because I don't want to be judged. Because, you know, it's because of all these uh, strange voices of yeah. people, society, 
all the judgment you know we are so scared of the stigma and we try to keep sticking on there hoping everything will get better and people are are sticking in a lot of relationships hoping it will get better but the truth is it never gets better never and i say if he slaps you once he'll slap you again because the thing is once somebody wrongs you if somebody lies to you the first time and you tolerate it they lie to you again because they believe you accepted it that first time and they'll keep doing that nowadays i have got times three rule mm -hmm. yeah you cheat on me the first time i forgive you because it's good to forgive people yeah. you know mm -hmm. the second time how ah, i'm planning my exit the third time it's like mm -hmm. i was waiting for this nail yeah peace and mental health is important mm -hmm. yeah and how was it for you jumping from a marriage into the into the world as a divorced woman you had Gosh. a child then i had a child tell me about it yeah mm -hmm. it was not easy it mm -hmm. was not easy first of all the perception out there is a divorced woman is readily available yeah yeah <laughs> So there are those people who come because they think you really need a they, man. They, they, they're, doing you a they're doing you a favor. But in my mind, I always say I can't date a married man. And um, for the longest time, I know I, even married men come and I'm like, I can't, I know I am divorced. I know I am divorced, but I'm not dating a married man. Because if I wanted to date a married man, if it was okay for me, then oh, why did I leave the other one? So I can't date a married man. And so for me, it's that thing of that enough senior bachelors out here. Mm -hmm. Widows, widowers, <laughs> <laughs> and mm. fellow divorcees, mm. why did mm. a married man? Mm. Yeah, so it, it's tough out there when everybody stigmatizes you, then everybody thinks you'll just go back. Eventually, you'll go back. You know our African customs. Mm. Like, you'll go round, 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 like in Utarudi too, you mm. know. Mm. And um, that stigma is paralyzing to a lot of women. Then also, if you have children, they're like, ah, you have children, why will you go with the children? Mm. And so it keeps the cycle of abuse going because of our cultural stigma. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But I, I tell people, I think the only thing any person needs, not even a woman, any person needs, you need financial de in, uh, independence. It's this, almost the tenth time I'm hearing that from, from Yeah, from, 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 you need from, financial from, uh, independence. Women, yeah. yeah. Mm. By the way, even men or women, I know men who've also gone through abuse. Mm. Yeah. Everybody needs some sense of financial independence so that in case anything happens, you can start from somewhere. Because I always say, like, even right now, if anything happened to me, like I lost my job, I lost everything I had, there's the one thing I won't sell. I'll not sell my car. Because that car, I'll just open the boot and me, I'll start selling beers. <laughs> Wait. I'll start selling potatoes because these kids must eat. Must eat. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And how did you rebuild your life? Okay. Are you okay? Ah. Are you okay? You can never be okay. Mm -hmm. I am better. You're better. I'm getting better. better. I am getting better each day. Yeah. You know, divorce is like death. Mm. You never like fully heal. Yeah, like I've lost my child. I've lost my mother. I lost my child um, as 11 years ago. I'm sorry. I've never let go. Mm. Like, yes, I'm okay. But there are moments when you reflect and you're like, you cry. Yeah, and there are moments when such kind of incidences happen to you again. Like, I mean, you get into other relationships and such kind of things happen the, again in your life. The triggers pop up. Yeah, the triggers are like, I can't take this anymore, I can't take this anymore, I can't, can't take this anymore. And you put a stop to it. Yeah, because you're like, this is me, I am ZP, and I need my sanity. For me to get that sanity, then it means I have to stop this, I can't take this anymore. So that's that's me. If If... If you have been abused in any way, it kind of makes you very alert to any kind of sense of abuse. Yeah. Some people say you end up having trust issues, but no, it's not an issue of trust issues. It's just being very alert because you don't really want to be taken advantage of a can. So when such a thing happens, you easily let go. You'll find that most divorced people easily let go because the first time is the hardest. Yeah, they say the first cut is the deepest, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we easily let go. So if somebody hurts us, we're like, breathe in, mm -hmm. breathe out. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, we have to reach that point of learning to easily let go. When people come and tell you, no, it's about perseverance. No, 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 why are we, why are we normalizing suffering? <laughs> I tell you, let's persevere. Marriage is about tolerance and perseverance. Yeah. Why are we using those words? 
Marriage is about happiness. It's about love. It's about being enjoying times together, not perseverance and tolerance. Let us stop normalizing uh, fear or pain. No. Yeah. If there's no more love, if there's no more enthusiasm, if there's no more happiness, if you're not sharing times together, sweetheart, you're not in a marriage. Yeah. yeah the relationship is opaque. Yeah, actually, you know, um, <laughs> let me talk about my therapist yeah, yes, a bit. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. I, and I tell say, I'm so scared of growing old alone. And it's been a fear I've had for a very long time. Yeah. And then she said, you know, Zippy, you can still be married and lonely in old age. And Ouch. I got a light bulb <laughs> moment because yeah. you're like, there are people who retire and they go home. Yeah. And the man wakes up and takes his breakfast and reads the magazine and goes to the shopping center and comes back in the evening. You're not together. And I'm like, why am I so scared? Of being alone in old age yet i have got friends i have children and i can do charity and just keep myself busy like um if there is nothing now there will be nothing in old age mm -hmm. so don't stick around with anyone who doesn't love just having, because you're scared of being lonely in old age having hope for something that is if it's if it doesn't exist right now it won't exist it won't exist yeah that's a very i mean if you're a bad cook truth. it's yeah. not going to change yeah. unless you really go for really good classes but i mean even even trained chefs, the food's yeah. just different, right? True. Yeah. I know you've do documented it somewhere here, either directly or indirectly. Mm. Possibly there are people who are in the shoes, in your shoes, those many years ago. Mm. You've talked about financial independence as mm. being very important in terms of moving forward and rebuilding your life. What else do we need to uh, to do as people who are in relationships? No, not just to. It's not like we are anticipating to divorce, but how yeah. can we have like a productive relationship where you know there's re reciprocation mm -hmm. there's love coming from both sides there's appreciation and of course not there's uh, abuse does not exist communication the moment communication ends the moment you stop spending time together then it's not a relationship you relate in a relationship if it's not if you if forget about it like i'm not even talking about gifts if yeah. you are not spending time together it's not a relationship if it's a long distance a relationship and you guys are not talking like twice or three times a day and i'm not talking about hi good morning so i go no but i was talking like you know what today i had an interview with quinta and you know it was about this like talk 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 the content of what happened during the day mm -hmm. if that dies you need to find a way to rekindle it because if it's not there fine i don't know what else is there but i would like to say don't store it abuse let's help each other and uh, yeah let's hold each other's hand i i am divorced but i always tell guys i think marriage is the most beautiful thing in i see that have you post it on social media <laughs> i love marriage i'm looking forward to get married you know, i used to tell my mom like mama you know me even here, i can get married even five times i don't mind if i am going to find the right one mm. i don't mind breaking whatever i have to get married again if i am going to find happiness mm. yeah in a relationship no? Mm. Uh, uh, okay <laughs> i'm not <laughs> on the spot <laughs> i am not in a relationship right now are you looking i am looking for but i'm looking for very specific things mm -hmm. i i'm looking for a man with children that's interesting because i have children and I'm not ready to give birth again. <laughs> <laughs> I kid. Uh -huh. I'm not having children again. Uh -huh. So I want a man who has got children and they are, is ready to just find companionship. And I want a man who's got his self-esteem intact because I am a handful. Yeah. So he needs to be very confident. I am a handful and I'm not ready to compress myself for any man. So I want a man who's coming ready to know that this woman is a handful and is ready to embrace me for mm. that. Mm. And she's hopeless romantic. I am <laughs> hopeless romantic. <laughs> anyway, still in the book, Zippy, you've documented that during your, the, the difficult relationship you went through, you, you actually ended up losing property. Yeah. You did. Mm -hmm. So how did you overcome that? How, how do you re I'm really curious. How do you rebuild? How do you rebuild and still, you know, be zippy, happy, smiling, laughing? Or is there more beyond there? You, 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 there's you, more. There's more behind the yeah, laughter. Say, those who <laughs> smile or laugh a lot hide so much. Oh, tell yeah. me about it. I, yeah. I left everything and started from scratch. And from scratch, I tell you, like, I got a house. The first place I went to was Nasra Estate, you know, and yeah. I had one carpet. I bought a mattress. 
and uh, we started life like that for a whole year i did not even have seats a whole year i did not have seats i bought seats the following year i think around june but um after three months i bought myself a car a car is not a necessity it's not a it's not a luxury for me it's a necessity mm -hmm. so three months after the divorce i sold some plots of land that i had and i bought a car and then i saved and moved to another place and bought seats i am i'm great at saving mm -hmm. like i am very good at saving my mother taught us how to save mm -hmm. i am very good at saving so i put a goal and i saved what is done big savings yeah <laughs> <laughs> everything i have i save hard for it yeah so it was very hard yeah. having to leave a house that you've constructed and having to leave a home you know we were doing well mm. i think sometimes it's just looking at it like i kept telling myself if we could make this with ricky in five years mm. zp i'm just about to turn 30 how much more can i make if i give myself even another 20 or 30 years but i told that to myself every day there's a time i wrote it and i pinned it on top of my head mm. headboard, headboard and, yeah. yes and i said if zp you could do that in five years how much more can you make in the rest of your life mm. And the carpet was nothing. I remember holding my daughter's birthday party. Mm. You know, you've left in December. Your daughter's birthday is in February. <laughs> nothing but a carpet. And my friend told me, oh, no, maybe just go to a hotel. I said, you know what? If my friends are my friends, mm, they'll, they'll come, come here. Yeah. And they came to my house. And we had and a birthday on, carpet, on the carpet party on the carpet. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And there are, there's, there are friends who gave me plates, cutlery, and I had in my kitchen, baby's clothes, like I started from scratch. And I tell people, it's never, it makes me proud to see where I am right now. Mm -hmm. like, <laughs> <laughs> like I've built another home. Like, I can congratulations. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yes. And, uh, and I tell myself, you should never be too ashamed. And then another thing that I did yeah. that I think helped me, I don't know if it can help somebody else, mm. but I never let people gossip. Because I tell you, like you meet me and like, hey, so that's the <laughs> And I'm like, ah, by the way, I left train, so. <laughs> <laughs> so it's not a subject of gossip anymore. It's not a subject of gossip yeah. anymore. So when somebody comes and tells you like, oh, so and so, you know, she left train. Who told you? She told me herself. Mm -hmm. So it, whenever it comes back, I know I'm the one who said it. So I never give people room to gossip because I tell it. Like, I, it's over. Yeah, it's over between me and so, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a nice trick. Yeah. Now, before before we look at because a lot of people who a lot of people who know you mm. actually your face is familiar. Apart from you know the the, the theater and films that you do, you are also a judge for Miss Miss, Miss President. President. Yes. Yeah, so when they see your face and they see your hair, mm -hmm. of course they relate. They link you know your your name your face to that show that promotes women in in political mm. leadership. Yeah. I, I want us to look at some statistics in terms of uh, gender-based violence, and they're not very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Because they say that in Kenya, uh, not just in Kenya, but they say that um, one out of four w women will have mm -hmm. experienced gender-based violence in their lifetime. Yeah. And that is not a small number. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, of course, the other one that is normally... Uh, well, people say that gender-based violence also exists among men. Yeah. Yeah, they say one. In Kenya, for example, it's one in ten men. Mm -hmm. Of course, the numbers are a bit yeah. low compared to, to women. And mm -hmm. then uh, further, they say that not all abuse is physical because mm -hmm. right now we have we are, what, what financial, have, we have financial abuse, abuse emotional, emotional abuse. abuse, and now we have mm -hmm. what was happening offline is, has now moved online. Now we even exactly. have online yeah. harassment. Yeah. Now, as a gender specialist, um, how would you advise women and men generally mm -hmm. in terms of matters that relate to abuse? Mm -hmm. Is it, how, how do you think we can tame this monster, you know, mm -hmm. from our nation, from our world? How, 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 is it possible? Mm. Uh, when, I don't think we can tame it. Mm. The thing is, I think we have to evolve as people in a way that we learn to understand that this is happening so that when you know that this is abuse yeah. and you tell somebody, let me say, if somebody attacks me on my social media, I'm always very fast to tell them, please, one, this is my wall, two, that's your opinion. And then three, I block them. It's my wall. <laughs> I mean, it's my wall. Yeah. Like, why do you go on ranting with someone who's abusing you? I mean, shut them out. 
Yeah, so I need, I think we need to have that confidence to be able to identify abuse. Because I think a lot of times we tolerate abuse so, so much mm. until we don't know how to tolerate it. And then also just attack it. Uh, if somebody, especially now in social media, if somebody is trolling you, let me say what, body shaming, mm. oh, you're too fat, you're, I mean, and then you keep quiet, they go and troll, I mean, stand out there. In fact, somebody body shames me, mm. oh, I'll stand there is when now I'll wear something and say, <laughs> this is my body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it shuts down somebody. Yeah, like, uh, I remember there was a time, mm. I had some lady and uh, we were like in an event and they said like, you have such a low accent. Then I said, yeah, yeah, I have a low accent. Then she's like, yeah, it's so low accent. I said, yeah, I'm a low. <laughs> like, <laughs> you, you get what I mean? Yeah. Like, reverse it. Back to sender. <laughs> Hit it back. <laughs> like, she was there and she now looked like the bad person. Like, what is your problem if she has a low accent? accent? Yeah. I mean, she's low. So, some of these things, when somebody attacks you, let us let us be able to also push our children to have great self-esteem and confidence and create safe spaces so that people can easily speak up when people can speak up yeah. about any kind of harassment taking place yeah. then the oppressors will start feeling like hey they'll speak about me so I, I don't need to harass her because if i harass her she's going to talk about it she's going to say so let us speak up if somebody's harassing you say tell them stop it i'm not interested don't abuse them don't don't hit back you know them chombano used yeah. to do it yeah. no yeah. don't hit back tell them to stop it yeah. yeah so we need to develop people's self-esteem people's confidence and just make people understand that we are unique and different we all can't be the same and and when we say we all can't be the same it is in every aspect yeah. from how we look from how we talk from how we work like we may be like even 10 lecturers of performing arts but the way each of us teaches is different yes and you'll find all the many students will like different teachers for different things so we all can try to be like this kind of person mm -hmm. we have you guys have got many presenters you yeah. know each of you is unique in your own different way we True. need to bring up our children to that level of understanding that their self-esteem is worth that way if anybody tries to attack them then they are able to counter it with that self-esteem because nowadays i find people are very are also very soft yeah let me put it like that mm. like children easily cry um parents easily like cuddle i'm very i'm a very strict parent <laughs> old school <laughs> i am old school like yeah. the only thing i don't do is the cane yeah. but yeah. there was a time i used to cane and now my daughter is 10 years we yeah. don't cane anymore we talk yeah. but she knows if i say i say stop it yeah there's a line not to cross yeah yeah like there are things you need to ask for and and we need to understand that and we hug and we tell stories and you tell them i love you and you're beautiful wow mom that's nice how did you do it what did the teacher tell you you know we need to learn also sense of appreciation. We don't appreciate each other yeah, enough. Yeah. Like we, we don't even tell each other you're smart every day. You get what I mean? You're going to work, but your colleagues don't even tell you you're smart. I mean, tell somebody, oh, you're smart. That's a nice suit. It's because it helps build our self-esteem. Yeah. Imagine if that was happening. If, 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 if in the morning, five people have told you you're smart, then you meet somebody who tells you, I, how are your earrings? Will you yeah. even care? No. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. So there is not even a way to tame. It's about learning to start changing the attitudes of people, but also reporting. Any harassment needs to be reported. Any abuse needs to be reported. Because even like I know we are from a political um, yeah, season, season. Mm. there are a lot of women who stepped down because of what? Harassment. True. Yes. Yeah. How can we make our girls and women believe that it doesn't matter what you're told? If, if I believe in my mother told me, Zippy, you're beautiful. How? <laughs> Everything else is a nanny yes. issue. Yes, if yeah. my father tells me you are smart, mm. I don't care. Mm. If my boss comes and tells me Zippy, that was brilliant. Mm. Anybody else says anything, I don't care. <laughs> you get it? Yes, because I feed into that little little energy yeah. of any good vibes. Mm. I say if each day I say I choose happiness mm. because every morning I choose happiness because. Every week, let me not say every day, yeah. every week something bad is going to happen. Somebody yeah. is going to tell something nasty or something is going to disappoint you. Yeah. And you have to choose whether to realize that something disappointing oh. or to just be happy because my daughter hugged me. Mm. Yeah. Very, very, very interesting and well put. Yeah, I remember Daisy said that in a lifetime about 70 women will have been abused, which is quite sad. Yeah. But from what Zippy has said, honestly, we can transform this world and turn it into a better place. I mm. see Madam Producer waving her time. 
which means that we are about to finish. What has surprised you most about uh, being a judge on Miss President regarding women? Women are brilliant. <laughs> women are very, very brilliant. Yeah. Women are smart. And mm. you know, on Miss President season two, we had, we have had very young women. Yes, mm -hmm. we are having very young women uh, this season mm -hmm. and I like it because it means we are having new ideas in terms of technology, agriculture, academia sector, the creative sector, IT, as in we, we are having so, so many brilliant women. Yeah. And when I look at the contestants of Miss President, it's not about even the winner, yeah. it's about if each of these top 50 women mm -hmm could leverage on the thought that out of the 750 plus, mm -hmm. they could manage to make it this far, mm -hmm. then they should be able to change the world. Mm -hmm. But I'm also happy that during these year's elections, we have got more elected women. True. And uh, I am also very excited that we have got two contestants mm -hmm. from the Miss President season one who have been uh, nominated yeah. to parliament wow. umu her mohammed mm -hmm. and rene mokaya and we're like so miss president has, has an, an impact. impact congratulations yes oh. so we are so so happy yeah. that uh to some it might just be a tv show but i think to the woman out there mm -hmm. it's a sign that it's possible for a woman to lead and even the trainings that happen on every show, which I think like for this season, there are episodes of the training separately on, yeah. on the YouTube, yeah. are enough to impact somebody, whether they are not in political leadership, whether oh. you're in business leadership, uh, or organizational leadership, there's so much you can learn about policy mm. and even just, uh, even just working. Mm. Yeah. Oh. Yes. So which book are you publishing next? <laughs> <laughs> you should be sure oh. I am publishing another book. Uh, it's coming. It's coming. Mm. But Trina, I have a, I have a show. It's another one woman show. Mm. It's called Side Chick Wife. Okay, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> are you a side chick wife? Are you talking to me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are you doing I, I, the duty I of a wife I and you are press. not sure if you're married? Do you know? I don't do press. <laughs> you don't do press? No. <laughs> So we have, especially in Nairobi, we have a lot of side chick wives. Like you don't know whether you're a wife or a side chick, you're there in between and you're like... Okay. <laughs> so the story is about dating and marriage today. Then My personal experiences yeah, yeah. and other people's experiences and it's <laughs> gonna be... Oh, you better come there. It's a Wednesday, yeah. Wednesday because Wednesdays are ladies. Night. Ladies night. When is that? I 28th need, September. Need, Wednesday, 28th September at the National Theatre. We are having night. side chick wife. <laughs> it's going to be a night to remember. <laughs> One woman show Dr. Zipio Cop. Be there. <laughs> Diarized. I'm going to show up just to figure out which, where I lie. You <laughs> should. You should. <laughs> <laughs> to know my fate. Yeah. Maybe you should too. Zippy, is there anything else you haven't done? Mm -hmm. Yeah, as we finish. Anything else I haven't done? Yeah. I haven't done so much. Uh -huh. <laughs> mm -hmm. I haven't done so much. I have not been married. <laughs> <laughs> I have not had a wedding in my life. Oh. But uh, I have dreams. I have I have big <coughs> dreams. I, I hope to work to, for the United Nations someday. That's my ultimate dream. Where can we find the book? Oh, the book, you'll find it at Nuria Online Bookstore. Or if you just... Um, Text me on Facebook. We'll find a way to deliver it. It, it will be delivered. Yeah. What can I say? Uh, thank you so much mm -hmm. for being on her standards. I think you're my home girl, so I wanted to say nyako, but yes. <laughs> maybe you know I, I like to say hi to my students. Please say hi to your students. <laughs> <laughs> say hi to your yeah, students. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I, I've been a lecturer of film and yeah. theater for. Yeah. It's now 13 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I always say, I'm so proud of my students. You make me wake up each Aww. day and believe that the industry can get better because uh, almost any film that has won an award in this country has got at least one or two of my students in it. And that makes me super proud. Yeah, Aww. so I believe in my students. I believe in teaching and training of film and creative arts. And I believe that we can get much, much better. Mm. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Zippy. Yeah. This conversation needs to move on to a different platform. <laughs> Online, me and Zippy will take it offline. We'll figure out where we'll talk. Yeah. But you know, you, you, I mean, you can, you can still talk to us. You can uh, drop us a comment at KTN Home. Talk to me at Quintambori. Talk to producer Grace Waweru. Tell us what you feel about this show. Is there any woman who you feel needs to be on this show? 
do not hesitate. We will definitely get back to you. From us here at KTN Home and the crew who you are not able to see, they are working very hard behind the scenes. We just want to say a Santa Sana and we see you next week. <laughs>